Well, I'm now joined here in the studio at the World Retail Congress by Deborah Weinwig, who is the founder and CEO of Core Site Research. Deborah, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. I'm quite honoured. I don't know about honoured, but it's a... <laughs> Um, Deborah, you're an expert in a lot of things, including technology. Um, we're going to focus really to, uh, I suppose, the technology issues that should be um, keeping retailers awake at night. Um, there are no shortage of new shiny things around in the technology space. And I think retailers, like every other industry, um, can spend their entire uh, corporate lives now uh, chasing after the next shiny thing on the technology horizon and never actually delivering anything. So um, given uh, what you see and what you know, uh, what do you think the core technologies are that retailers should be concentrating on? And then we'll delve into some of the specifics. Yeah, well, I mean, artificial intelligence kind of covers everything yeah. right now. And that is, and I think it's something that retailers have become more comfortable with because obviously it touches on so many things. And so we're finding that computer vision specifically, because I think there's so many different uh, companies that have, I think, very easy to implement, um, if you will, offerings. And so whether, let's say, it's your outfit and I take a picture and you know I can find out where to get your jacket and your shirt and your pants, and then it'll tell me which retailer to go to. And so those are very, right, easy to implement for retailers. Uh, there's also, um, this idea of, right, I'm going up to whether it's a convenience store or a grocer and I want to buy an apple, a banana, uh, you know, items that don't, right, eaches, items that don't have QR codes or um, UPC codes per se. And so there's also now the technology that can allow, right, anything that is fast, quick, doesn't require, you know, kind of a long-term integration, we're finding is very easy and uh, retailers are very interested. I would say... The other topic that has been, honestly, it's what got me into retail technology originally, um, which was uh, pricing. So way back when, this idea of price optimization and how could you put parameters around retailers to think about, right, I'm buying this product because, right, merchants always think they've made the perfect decision and, you know, that yellow jacket with the black dots um, eventually will sell. It's just the weather. It's just the consumers being finicky. It's just, it's, it's just that. But ultimately, you probably bought incorrectly and you need to mark it down at a certain rate. And so what we're seeing is there's more science, more artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning around pricing. And so whether it's dynamic pricing, we're seeing uh, ESLs, electronic shelf labels, and technology to enable retailers and also the consumer to do a better job around pricing and price intelligence. And so we are seeing that drive a certain amount of, I would say, spending, uh, and also helping retailers invest in inventory better and also making sure that if you have the if you know you're running a certain promotion and you don't get the return that you had expected are there other issues for example was the merchandise not in the store was it not on the shelf you know can you through video analytics figure out why the promotion didn't work as you had expected and maybe it was the adjacencies maybe it, there was another issue in the store maybe it rain when you thought it was going to be sunny. And so we are seeing a significant amount of investment um, in, I would say, pricing optimization, dynamic pricing, okay, more so, so than so, I would expect. Okay, so if, we, if you took those sort of three buckets, then, mm -hmm. um, the whole sort of artificial intelligence uh, world at the moment, um, sort of this uh, algorithmic um, retail and uh, world that we're fast entering in, what, what is the retailer's advantage in investing in artificial intelligence and where do retailers, retailers need to go in order to understand it better? Because it's a bit of a black hole. It is absolutely a bit of a black hole, but the, but the other challenge is they are, if you're a, right, there's a very limited number of AI or ML PhDs. And the challenge is to, um, so I was at uh, the Northwestern Retail Analytics Council, um, and we were with a room full of CIOs from all the top retailers. And so asked the question, how many of you have an AI strategy? Every hand went up. How many of you have AI talent? One hand went up. Do you know how they got the talent? Acquisition. And so that's the challenge, and that's why these partnerships or 
uh, you know, kind of collaborations with innovators or startups or, you know, larger ERPs. That's why that's so incredibly important. Well, I, I was um, at a conference recently with uh, a professor of artificial intelligence from one of the big American universities. And uh, the room was absolutely packed out. But, you know, they even stopped people standing around the sides of the room. And he said, he said, this is amazing. He said, you know, I've been a professor of artificial intelligence for 35 years. And I used to go to conferences and there was three people in the room, <laughs> if I was lucky. Five people was an absolute crowd. He said, in the last few years, you know, AI has been, in a sense, discovered. He said, but he said the, the, the really bad thing about it is that the, the very big companies, you know, the likes of Google and mm -hmm. Amazon and not to say necessarily them specifically, but those types of organisations are basically going to all the universities and buying up the faculties of artificial intelligence or you know whatever the, their titles are, mm -hmm. and bringing them uh, into internal teams because there is a complete lack of talent, and that's actually not good because that's really sucking out the, the sort of the academic institutions of, uh, of uh, artificial intelligence uh, resource and analysis, which will hit us in years to come, not necessarily yeah. immediately. So, yeah, absolutely, talent is a, an amazing, amazingly difficult issue to I will show, though, a very manage. interesting story along the talent side. So there's a an innovator, we call them, um, whom we've had the honor to work with, and this uh, female-led CEO, and so what she she herself is also a PhD. She said that she went and um, pulled a bunch of white papers that were written by a bunch of you know AI and ML PhDs, and she then went to them and to talk about their papers, and that's how she attracted them. Right, a startup, you're not paying particularly well, you know, you still have you know potentially a product that isn't necessarily tested and, you know, and so, but the, but she was speaking to them on their own terms. And even if you're not, you know, if you don't have your PhD, right, if you've kind of done your homework and you're showing them kind of your true level of interest, there may be other things that you can offer as opposed to, you know, kind of the salary and, and, and other things. So I think that it's, you know, if retailers are looking for this talent, they have to, I think, really understand why it is that they want those folks in their organization and what is the value that they deliver as opposed to maybe you, you partner or collaborate with, you know, one of these larger companies or you, you work with some of the startups that have that talent. And, but talent is really what's going to, to be the, the true win here for everyone. And I think, and having just a, a strategy that you follow. And I also think you've got, you know, kind of strategy A and strategy B because what we find sometimes is, you know, right, the, the bright, shiny object, as we talked about before, is strategy A. That's not always going to come through, and strategy B, B is much more realistic. And so we do think following that, and, and there is, I think, a very clear path. And, you know, and it's an 18 months to a three-year plan of, of what they're going to do and how they're going to do it and, and how data starts to become, you know, part of your organization and part of your decision process. So let's look at another one of those buckets that's have a look at um, sort of computer vision because actually computer vision does have a, the capability of, of changing everything. You know, we've lived through uh, a whole different generations of uh, compute, compute power, computer are doing very different things, but computers have never been able to, to see in a sense and then make decisions on the basis of what they can see. What, you know, if, if, you, if you take computer vision to its logical conclusion in the next you know, three, four to five years, what do you think that will enable retailers to do that they can't do at the moment? Uh, and and, and how is that going to benefit them? So depending on, right, there's numbers anywhere, let's call it 7 to 8% out of stock levels. Well, there are companies that exist right now that, from a computer vision perspective, can tell you what you know, what SKU and what your in-stock level is or what your out-of-stock issue is. And so if you could be on stock on every item all the time, theoretically, uh, once again, data that we've heard, your comps could go up anywhere between 150 and 300 basis points. So that's from doing nothing except having the product in the store that the customer wants to buy. And which is, you know, theoretically, I understand how difficult retail is, so I'm not going to say any of it's easy. But if you can just have the product availability for the consumer when they come in, that is, I mean, something that could change the overall ball game for consumers. Also, if, right, as we're going to unstaff stores, and maybe that's just from a convenience store model, but maybe in some cases, right, 
you know, there's, and right now there's a lot of, um, I think any of us who've been into a, let's call it self-checkout, which can be a little bit clunky, but if we can have a, um, an unstaffed experience where, once again, right, we, we can just kind of fly through there um, through computer vision, it makes the physical experience so much different because I think there is a social part of being in a physical store. It's just we need to remove some of the friction. Now, um, you're in an interesting position to see uh, maybe some new startups that uh, uh, are new on the block in the startup arena, uh, which is, you know, where a lot of this technology has emanated from the technology we take for granted, started up in the, in the startup space, and maybe some of the big boys came up and, and bought them or they did it themselves. Um, what's, what's hot in the startup space at the moment? Um. Last mile, grocery tech, um, automation. So anything where you're seeing robotics and AI combined, um, because right, the consumer wants it. You know, they don't even want it in a day; they want it in an hour. And so, right, so I come. Well, we spend a lot of time in China, so where you have Meituan and Elamon and other kind of very fast delivery mechanisms. So, right, the this idea of thirty minute delivery. But, right, we don't necessarily have the same infrastructure in other parts of the world. And so if you can um, almost have a network effect uh, in large cities or in, and even in smaller cities where you have, whether it's underground, uh, and this is happening, I, um, you know, th so there are uh, startups who are um, very well funded who have done this. So they have underground um, warehouses and above ground. Uh, and we're seeing this from, uh, you know, several startups. And they can then almost have like a network effect. So in these cities, if you need it that same day or if you need it in 30 minutes and if it's grocery versus if it's fashion. And imagine if you could have, if you're a, so if, number one, you forgot your tie and it's you've got a meeting that day, or if you brought two left shoes, which has certainly happened to, or I brought a black shoe and a blue shoe, so, right, it's... Luckily, somebody, I don't have a problem with a tie. Yes, so, but, right. but <laughs> some of these things have happened to all of us when we, when we travel, but I do think what's very interesting is, right, let's say you're going to an event that night and you want to try on something new, so if you could have, a, you know, kind of a delivery service, bring a bunch of items, you could try them on, and you keep the one that you want, because the challenge is that if you ship all these things to your home and you try them on and, you know, a few weeks later you, you get around to returning them, those are immediate markdowns for the retailers. And so to me, when you have a return rate of, let's say, on average, about 40 percent, and that's across many categories. And what's fascinating is it doesn't matter if you buy it in the store or if you buy it online, because many times in the store you're not trying goods on anyways. And so I look almost as this, like, nirvana as you have, you know, and, and also it starts to change interaction. So, right, if I can come to your home, maybe I stay outside on the porch while you try everything on, or, hey, if I, if you look at me as a stylist and your partner, you invite me in to also kind of, and maybe I have some shoes and I have other items that you may want to purchase for me or maybe not. But I do start to see last mile and, and as a real um, opportunity. And, right, I mean, we've got all kinds of last mile companies that are... I mean, I mean when, when you look at last mile... Um, is speed the new black in that instance? Absolutely. I, I think that that's, I haven't heard people say that, but I think that that is abs speed and accuracy. And also, too, with grocery, right? So grocery in the U.S. is, you know, let's call it a one point, well, food, so food at home and food away at home are $1.1 $1 .1 trillion industry. Grocery is said to be about $700 billion. So to me, my roots are in grocery. It was always amazing to me that everyone focused on fashion, because right, and for grocery to be disrupted, right? And so what we're seeing right now too that's very interesting is where you have very large grocers, but also the regionals who are kind of banding together because they're they've got some real challenges. And so I think and grocery tech, right? So a lot of it's computer vision and going back to kind of being in stock. So it's last mile, it's being in stock, it's figuring out your promotions. You know, how does the weather, I mean, hey, if it's a hot day, right, I want to go in and get a cold drink. If it's a cold day, I want hot cocoa and I want chicken noodle soup. So, you know, there is a significant opportunity, and right, and we want to check out quickly. So, and I think there's also this, very much it goes back to this social component. So I've always had this this dream. I go, I'm, I'm leaving my, my home, my apartment, whatever it is, I'm, I'm leaving the office, and right, and I haven't seen people in a while because, you know, you and I live on a plane, and... Um, <laughs> But I can tell people, right, like I'm going to my neighborhood, you know, grocer, you know, meet me there, 
right? So let's go there, let's grab a bite, let's grab some coffee, whatever it is. And so that it starts to become more this ecosystem platform network effect, whatever kind of term you want to, to use. And I think that it starts to become something more. Well, we're almost out of time. I've got one last question of course. for you. Okay, so uh, in this crazy speed is a new black uh, world that we are either living in or we're certainly hurtling uh, towards, how would you define in a couple of words the era that we're in, the moment that we're in? Rather? I think we're in an era where not only does the consumer want to do good, but the retailer, the retailers, the brands, et cetera, do as well. They don't always know what that is, but they're, we're seeing sustainability is such an important part, right? Re-commerce is so important right now, rentals. And so I think everyone's trying to figure out, so we, we, we talked to somebody the other day, we were brainstorming with them about, right, what if you could go into a retailer and bring all your goods that you don't want anymore, and they could actually help you sort through that. So whether it was, you know, going to go to, let's say, you know, um, a thrift shop or whether it was going to go to any one of these different companies that could sell your goods for you. But you started, to, you felt good about purchasing and about utilizing, you know, the product you had and about buying new. But this idea of how can everyone kind of work together to be in a more sustainable world and, you know, kind of this whole idea of, right, you know, only keep what sparks joy for you. So few, I've always looked at it as fewer better things, but I, I do think there's this sustainable and, and as everyone wants to give back and work together, I, I think there's a huge opportunity for retailers to be at the center of that. Well, as a hoarder, <laughs> I found that concept really frightening. My wife would love it. But, uh... <laughs> Deborah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very As much always. indeed for joining us. Thank you so much.